Hello and welcome to the K-Scope podcast. Billy Reeves here. Happy New Year. To kick things off then, multi-instrumentalist, music PhD, Simple Minds' is keyboard player, singer, songwriter Catherine Ann Davis, also known as the Ann Caress, has an album out now on K-Scope. It's called Confessions of a Romance Novelist. Before we hear from Catherine, let's hear the opening track, shall we? This is called Long Year. Confessions of a Romance Novelist. Uh, Some of the album was produced and co-written with Manson's Paul Draper. And I am, I have to confess, a huge fan of Manson. So when I met Catherine recently, I started by asking her how she and Paul Draper got together. He sort of involved himself, really. Um, He sent me a message on um, MySpace when I was at university. So that was back in 2007, 2008. And um, he was just like, do you want to come and do some demos with me? And we did a couple then. And it just didn't really work out at the time. Like, a lot of things happened for me. I sent out some some CD. I think I sent out eight CDs and getting, ended up getting a review in The Enemy, Metro. Uh-huh. It was ridiculous. And off the back of that, got a manager, and everyone wanted me to drop out of uni. And I, I just didn't want to do that. You know, I'm from, like, a proper, you know... Like, working class background as the first person in my family to go to university so it was really important for me to see that through so we had a bit of a false start really but we kept in touch and um, then he moved into his studio in West London um, the kitchen um, which was Hugh Padgham's place oh, right. okay. and uh, he just sort of said you, you know do you want to come and record some songs so we sort, it sort of started like that really we never had an intention of making a record my record and Paul's solo record have kind of seamlessly kind of merged together. So my record started out as 100 demos that I sent to Paul. I said, right. pick the best songs. And we started recording them with John Barnett on drums and uh, Ben Stack Stacks on bass. And Paul also uses them for his record too. Uh, but halfway through the process, Paul and I started writing together. 
Um, and that's how we finished the record off. And we've done the same with his. His was a bunch of old songs that he'd written, I think, ten years ago. And then he sort of said, oh, I can't write anymore without you. So we've written the other half of the record together. Wow. We've tracked it the same with John and Stack. So the two records are kind of like bookends to each other. Okay. So the band as such is, is us. But, um, and that will work out quite nicely for when we go out on the road. Why the anchoress? The anchoress actually came from watching a BBC documentary. God bless the BBC. God bless the BBC. God bless the BBC. I'm very on brand today. Which, which documentary? <laughs> I can't remember what it was. I very rarely watch TV because I'm always mm. in the studio. And I came home early one night and I sat down and I was watching something on BBC4. And it was about the anchoress. What, and what an anchoress was. So it was this idea of a kind of almost like a medieval proto nun. So right. they would wall you up in this little building that was like a kind of annex to the church. Right. And you weren't to have any contact with human beings whatsoever. You're only your food, your water, etc., and your prayers and your missives were sort of poked through this tiny little hole right. in the. Uh, in the uh, in the corner, and to me that felt like a really good analog for being in the studio, yeah. and uh, just the way my life is quite sort of uh, solitary and very much about holding myself up in a single room and sending out these little missives through the little hole Perfect. in the wall, which is the internet. Perfect. I guess. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> female songwriters in rock what are the unique difficulties in within that oeuvre part of me wants to say that unless there comes a day when i miraculously develop such great pelvic floor muscles i start playing the piano (laughs) with my vagina it is irrelevant (laughs) whether or not i'm a woman or a man making music and i would like to think that we could one day get to that point where it doesn't matter and i hate that people want to put female producer female singer songwriter Mm. in front of everything when you're referred um, in, in the press. Well, why does that happen then, do you think? I think it happens because we live in a culture full of endemic misogyny. <laughs> Sadly, I would like to say a that... A fine analysis, comrade. <laughs> I would like to say that, you know, that wasn't true, but... And I think it's really easy for people to kind of... 
you see other women kind of get, give interviews about being a woman in music and say, mm. oh, it's not a deal for me, you know, it's not something I encounter. And it's like, well, that's wonderful for you, but, you know, look around you. Even today, I think I, before I just came in, there was a piece um, by one of the members of Konecki who was talking mm. about the Music for Misfits BBC documentary that yeah. had been on. I'm not getting like paid to sponsor the BBC here, by the way. <laughs> yeah. It just so happens I only watch the BBC. But she was saying, you know, how interesting that all of those women in that era had kind of been erased from the narrative of indie. There was no mention of PJ Harvey. There was no mention of, you know, any of the big... I don't know too much about yeah. well, the Britpop era, there wasn't but... That there wasn't that many. It was Louise from Sleeper, the two girls in Echo Belly. I mean, there wasn't that yeah, many. Yeah, and she, she... It was she, a blokey thing. Yeah, she made Britpop. the point, though, that it was completely erased fr- from the narrative. Mm. There was nothing there. But that's partly, like you say, because it's not being represented in the first place. I also think through that period, they had to be... They either had to be ballsy... You know, blokey, or they had to be funny. I was going to say, I'm not sure that that's ever out. been much different, to be honest. Yeah. There are certain um, archetypes, I think, that are acceptable yeah. in terms of what kind of woman you can be in the music mm. industry. You know, it's like the Madonna whore dichotomy. You yeah. can either be the ballsy, mouthy rock chick, or mm. you can be the um, femme fatale. God help you if you want to do anything, you know, different. If you want to be a female auteur, there aren't many examples of that. It's probably save Kate Bush, I imagine, yeah. which is where I'd like to park my bum firmly. But I'd probably like to park it firmly in some of those male seats, like Brian Wilson's seat. You know, I I think it's interesting that often as a female musician you get asked who are your influences and people Mm. expect you to say Kate Bush, Tori Mm. Amos, etc. And it's like, sure, we listen to those people, but, you know, I also listen to a lot of guys and why can't I want to emulate that? Short of wanting to play the piano with my... Lady parts. <laughs> <laughs> Fine answer. But finally then, for those that don't know anything about you, what can we expect from your debut album on K-Scope? Um, it's 13 songs. They've got some music in them <laughs> and some a, words. Is there a, a, is there a, a, a lyrical <laughs> motif? I shouldn't be obtuse, should I, in my answers <laughs> You could there. be as obtuse um, as you'd like. The, the record is about sort of deconstructing ideas of love and romance and, and what sort of female archetypes we hear about in pop songs as well. I wanted to kind of play with people's preconceptions about what love songs might be. Hence there's a song on there called P.S. Fuck You, um, which is the central piece of the record. Um, and it's all about what I like to call revenge pop. So uh, Was that something that you planned to start with, or did that happen as, a, as part of the creative process? I think it, it sort of it kind of came through of its own accord, really, when I started thinking about what kind of record I wanted to make and why would I even bother to make a record? Because mm. I think you have to ask yourself that. It's like, well, what have you got to say that's any different from anyone else? Yeah. And I didn't feel as if I was hearing a lot of that kind of voice around me. Though, as I say, we, it was very much women making music who were kind of sitting in these very neat boxes of making, you know, polished pop or soulful R&B. And it's like, well, mm. they weren't really speaking to me about my experiences in the world. So... Mm. And I'm pretty pissed off most of the time. Mm-hmm. And I want to kind of uh, have revenge on quite a lot of people. So. <laughs> Use your art to do so. Yeah, exactly. What else is art for? Oh, you bleeding hearts. Oh, how times have changed. Well, let me reassure you there are some sins in this life you can not erase I know you say that people change but you know me I can't be read that easily you like to think that you know
The Anchoress, that's the title track from Confessions of a Romance Novelist, which is out now on K-Scope. Deconstructing love stories with each song being sung by a different character. Sneaking big ideas past the listeners of daytime radio, not my words, the words of a Q magazine. Right, some details of K-Scope acts on tour before we finish. Tesseract have started the Polaris UK and European tour with K-Scope's Nordic Giants in support on the UK leg until the 12th of February. Then the tour goes through Europe. Now, this includes a London show at Coco. Camden Town, Tesseract, the main act with Nordic Giants on first. This show is sold out. And if you are going to see Tesseract with Nordic Giants in support, check the venue for stage times because Nordic Giants are on quite early. And Nordic Giants are doing their own headline tour in Europe through March. Stephen Wilson still on his tour, of course. He'll be co-headlining B-Prog, my friend, in Spain in early July. It's a co-headline with Opeth. The Pineapple Thief are also playing at that festival. Our friends The Receiver have a mammoth tour going on in the US. Starting in February, it takes them through till June. Well over a 100 dates The Receiver in the United States this summer. Uh, pointing Stephen Wilson fans and uh, fans of good music towards the Jane Getter premonition on K-Scope's sister label Mad Fish. Uh, the band features Adam Holtzman from Stephen Wilson's band. Uh, they're doing some shows in support of On, the Jane Getter's album. And of course, Stephen Wilson has a new album out right now on K-Scope. It's called Four and a Half, so-called, because it bridges the gap between Hand Cannot Erase, Stephen's fourth solo album, and his next. It's out on vinyl, on CD, on Blu-ray, and uh, digitally. This, from Stephen Wilson, then, is entitled My Book of Regrets. See you soon. In the bank 
back of a taxi cab in London town It's like watching TV with the sound turned down Cause I can feel it I've got a buzz in my head When I'm on my way Shopping malls the Street cars They ignore their girlfriend's cars Cause they got plans now And tonight they won't be home Just wait till the morning comes
Just wait till the morning 